Hey everyone, I'm Mr. A, and today we're going to talk about completing the square. I'm really excited about this video. I've been looking forward to making it for a long time. Completing the square is one of my favorite moments in high school mathematics. Most students will run across the technique of completing the square, but very few will be exposed to the actual story behind it, and it's a beautiful geometric story. If you understand what you're doing when you complete the square, you can forget about all the memorization, and it just makes sense. And it's an ancient story. What I'm going to be showing you today dates back over 4,000 years to the Babylonians. They were able to find solutions to problems that today we would call quadratic equations. They didn't have that language back then. In fact, they didn't even have algebra as we know it. They lacked symbolic manipulation. However, they were still able to solve the problems by simply following this beautiful story. Let's consider a classic problem from algebra textbooks. You have a rectangle with a length 6 greater than its width. The area of the rectangle is 8. Find the width. We're going to pretend for the moment that we don't know anything about algebra, and we're just going to think about a picture. Here's the rectangle. If the length is 6 greater than its width, we can label that x and x plus 6, and we know that the area of the rectangle is 8. Now let's just focus on the picture and think about what we can do to manipulate this. The first thing we want to do is notice that there's a square inside of that rectangle. Let's separate the square and the rectangle. So we have a square that is x by x, and we have a rectangle on the side of it that is 6 by x. Notice, importantly, I have not changed the area of the shape at all. All I've done is go from the original rectangle to a rectangle that is formed of a square and a smaller rectangle attached. The area is still 8. Now I'm going to split the small rectangle on the side into two pieces. I have not changed the area of the entire figure, it is still 8. Now what I'm going to do is take one of those pieces and break it off, and then I'm going to just swing it around to the bottom of the shape. At this point, what we've done is rearrange the pieces of the original rectangle into a shape that's almost a square. We have this side is x plus 3, this side here is x plus 3, and then we're missing this little piece in over here. Now here again, the important point is that we have not changed the area. Before I go any further, let's remember what the technique is called, completing the square. Have you ever stopped to think about why we call it that? It's because we're literally going to complete this square. There's a little piece here that's missing, and if we fill it in, then we can turn this into an actual square. That's what we're going to do next. Here's the piece that we're talking about. In the right-hand side, in this picture, if I fill in that missing piece, then I have an actual square, an x plus 3 by x plus 3 square. However, for the first time, and this is really important, we have now changed the area of the shape. It's no longer 8, it's 8 plus whatever the area of this piece that we added in. How big is this piece that we added in? If this is 3, that means that this down here is also 3. And if this is 3, that means that this right here is also 3. So this is a 3 by 3 square. In other words, we've just added 9 to the area of the original shape. That means that the area of this square is 8, the original shape's area, plus the 9 we just added. Obviously, my picture is not to scale here, and that's fine. The purpose of the picture is just to help us tell the story and think through the mathematics. Once we create a square from our picture, though, I've turned this into a much simpler problem. I have a square whose area is 8 plus 9, or 17. So if we have a square whose area is 17, then we know that each side of the square must be the square root of 17. And simply solving for x tells us that x is the square root of 17 minus 3. The astute among you may be thinking, hey, wait a minute, Mr. A, it's plus or minus rad 17, isn't it? Because I took the square root of 17? Well, yes and no. In this problem, this was a purely geometric problem, and that is how the Babylonians treated this. This is long before negative numbers were a thing in mathematics, so there would only be one solution to this. That would be the positive root of 17 minus the integer 3. Mathematically, the quadratic equation that's sort of behind the scenes here does have a second root. Negative the square root of 17 minus 3 also solves the quadratic that is lurking behind the scenes of this geometric representation, but the geometric problem itself has only one solution, the positive solution, which is rad 17 minus 3. Now think about how amazing that is. We just solved this problem with no classic algebra. We never wrote down a quadratic. We did not factor anything. We certainly didn't employ anything as esoteric as the quadratic formula. And yet, simply by turning this rectangle into a square, which we were able to do by adding in this missing piece that had an extra 9 area, we were able to turn this into a much simpler problem to solve. And that's the beauty of completing the square. It's a simple geometric story about rearranging the pieces of a rectangle until they become a square. 
one of the most amazing things about mathematics, and it's what makes it such a powerful tool in science and in problem solving in general, is that once we understand something, we can generalize that result to cover a lot of scenarios that it didn't necessarily cover in the beginning. And we actually had a hint of that on the previous page when I talked about this extra root. Geometrically, that root doesn't exist here. There's no negative solution to the side of a square. But mathematically, there's something else going on here. And this part eluded the Babylonians. But as modern mathematicians, we can look at this and understand that, hey, there's actually a quadratic behind the scenes here. Here we have a classic quadratic equation, and we could of course try to factor this, although we're not going to be able to find factors of 9 that will give us a 4, so we'll have to resort to something like the quadratic formula. But we can turn this into the exact same problem that we just solved a moment ago. To begin, I would like to rearrange the terms a little bit here. So all I've done is add 9 to both sides, and now I have x squared plus 4x equals 9. I'd like you to notice that this actually describes a picture very much like the one we were just talking about. x squared is a square, x by x and 4x is a rectangle that is 4 by x. So you can see that this is the same scenario as the first problem. We have a rectangle, and this 9 represents the area. Now let's do exactly what we did before. Let's split this side into a 2 and a 2. And then let's take this piece, break it off, and swing it around to the bottom. Notice you don't need a fancy animation in order to do this. You can simply redraw the picture with this piece on the bottom. In class, this is how I teach my students to do this, and I really encourage you to draw these two pictures anytime you're doing a completing the square problem because it helps you think back through the story. We're taking the square with the extra rectangle, breaking that rectangle in half, and then putting one half of it onto the bottom. This gets us as close as we can get to a square without affecting the area. Right now, the area is still 9. But of course, we're going to complete the square by filling in this missing piece down here. As soon as we fill in that missing piece though, the area is no longer 9, it's 9 plus whatever the area of this missing piece is. How much did we add to the area of this square? If this is 2, we've got a 2 here. If this is 2, we have a 2 here. So altogether we've got a 2 by 2 square, which means we've added 4 to the area. Let me just be clear here, that 4 is not by adding 2 and 2, it is 2 times 2. This is the area of the little square that we've added, so I'm not adding these, I am multiplying them to get 4. We now have an area that's 9 plus 4, which is 13, but that's actually a square, right? So we started off with a rectangle and we had an area of 9, we've turned that into a square with an area of 13. That means that x plus 2 has to be the square root of 13. Now let me take you over to the algebra because there's another connection here I'd like you to make. Let's think about what's going on here. The left-hand side of this equation is the picture itself, right? So here's the square plus the 4x rectangle. This square plus this 4x rectangle. The right-hand side is the area of the shape. That was 9 to begin with. Now I don't have a rectangle and a square anymore. I have one great big square and the area of a square is side times side. So the left-hand side represents my x plus 2 by x plus 2 squared, x plus 2 squared. The right-hand side is still the area, but the area is not 9 anymore because we added in this piece. So the area is now 13. I'm replacing this square and a rectangle with one larger square, but when I do that, I have to add in some area. These two shapes used to have an area of 9. This one shape has the original area of 9, plus an additional four units of area, so a total of 13. And now I can simply take the square root of both sides, getting me x plus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 13. Notice that I'm doing plus and minus this time. That's because now I'm solving an algebraic problem. I'm still using the geometric picture to help me think through the story of what I'm doing, but I am solving an algebraic problem. And this quadratic is going to have two solutions. If I subtract 2 from both sides, I find that the two solutions are negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 13. And there you have it. No need for the quadratic formula. No need for memorizing some steps. We do not need an algorithm here. We just need to think about the picture and the story. We start with a rectangle. We want to get that rectangle to be as close to a square as possible. The way we do that is by noticing that every rectangle already has a square inside of it, but then there's an extra piece that makes it too long in one direction. We split that extra put half of it onto the bottom, which gets us this picture, and then all we need to do is complete the square by adding in that little extra piece. We adjust for that extra area in the algebra here, and then we can simply take the square root of both sides because we now have a square. We can actually use this story to solve any quadratic if we're a little bit flexible about what area means. So normally in geometry, area would have to be a positive number. That means that a problem like this would be challenging for us. This is a square, and then we're taking away a rectangle, and then we have plus 7 here. When I do that first step of rearranging terms, I get a square minus a rectangle, and I have a negative area. 
So there's actually two things here that we're going to abstract a little bit and be flexible with. Doing so will allow us to continue to use this useful picture and story, but will still allow us to solve any quadratic we come across. First of all, this negative seven area. That's problematic because we can't actually have a negative seven area. The good news, however, is that if we just go with the flow and pretend that the area is negative seven, the picture will still bring us to the correct solution. That's because the math doesn't care, right? The picture is a way for us to visually represent what's going on in this quadratic. The other thing we'll want to be a little bit flexible with is this minus 4x rectangle. We could draw a square and then try to subtract part of it with a rectangle. Doing that makes the picture a lot harder to work with. So instead, what I like to do is simply add a negative 4x rectangle. So that might have sounded weird. What is a negative 4x rectangle? Don't worry about it that much. Negative numbers really aren't a thing in geometry. Geometry is grounded in the physical world, and we cannot have a negative length. But mathematically, this is fine. There are plenty of times when a mathematical model fits the real world for a period of time, but then the math keeps going beyond where it's applicable to the world. That's the kind of scenario we're in here. So to make our lives easy, let's just pretend this is a negative four length because that will give us a negative four X rectangle and it will allow us to keep our picture nice and simple. If we do that, then we can say that the area, quote unquote, is negative seven, and we can proceed exactly as we did before. We can split this extra piece down the middle, yielding us negative two and negative two, and then we're going to pop this piece off and bring it down around to the bottom. Now we've gotten our rectangle to be as close to a square as we can get it without actually changing the area. Here's the part where we complete the square. So we're missing this little piece down here. We're going to need to add that piece in in order to complete this square. How much is that that we're adding? Well, if this side is negative two and this side is negative two, what is negative two times negative two? That would be positive four. So the area that we're adding is actually an extra four. If you take a minute to think about it, this will always be a positive number that you're adding because it'll be a negative times a negative, like in this case, or it'll be a positive times a positive the way it was in the last problem. And once we have a complete square, we can go back to the algebra. Now we have just one square and the area used to be negative seven, but we added four. So we have to add that four to balance this side. This is a larger shape than the shape that was there in the beginning. We added exactly four units of area, so we have to add that to keep this equation balanced. Then we simply take the square root of both sides and we arrange to solve for x being two plus or minus the square root of negative three. A couple of points to make here. There are two roots because this is a quadratic, so we're going to have two solutions to this algebraic equation. The other thing that's worth pointing out is notice we have a square root of a negative three. That means that these solutions are imaginary. Now, if you haven't learned about imaginary numbers yet, that's okay, you can ignore this part, but suffice to say it's an extension of the number system, and the reason it's popping up here is because we had this negative area. That can't actually happen, which is why we're getting an imaginary solution. Up until now, I've kept it simple by doing two things. The first thing I did was I kept this number an even number. That's the number that we're always going to be splitting in half over here. Now, if that's not an even number, it's fine. You just end up with a fraction. You divide it by two. And like if this was a five, you would have five halves and five halves. Or you could use 2.5 if you like decimals. The other thing that can happen is this number in the front could be something other than one. What if we have something like this where there's three squares? So let's start by dividing everything by three, because it would be nicer if this was just one x squared. Just as before, I don't want it equal to zero. I want to get this constant term over here. So I have a square and a rectangle, and then the area, quote unquote, over here. So we have the x by x square, and then the negative 4 thirds by x rectangle, and the area, quote unquote, is negative two. Again, let this negative length just be okay for now. It's a lot easier to draw the picture this way than it is to try to subtract it from the square. It will work out in the end. And now we're going to solve this exactly as we did before. We're going to start by splitting this rectangle right down the middle. So half of negative four thirds would be negative two thirds. Then we're going to break this piece off and bring it down around to the bottom. At this point, we've gotten our rectangle to be as close to a square as possible, but we need to complete the square by filling in this missing piece down here. This time it's a negative two thirds by negative two thirds square. Multiplying negative two thirds by negative two thirds, we get an area of four ninths for this extra piece of the square. So if I want to add negative two to four ninths, I just need to ask myself, what is the same as negative two that has a nine in the denominator? Well, that would be negative 18, right? Negative 18 divided by nine is negative two. So adding four ninths to our negative 18 ninths, we get a total area of negative 14 ninths. Now that we have the area of our square, we can go back to the equation and replace the old square and rectangle with the new larger square. That gives us x minus 2 thirds quantity squared and whose quote unquote area 
is negative 14 over 9. We can take the square root of both sides, giving us x minus 2 thirds is equal to plus or minus the square root negative 14 over 9. And then solving for x, we get 2 thirds plus or minus the square root of negative 14 over 9. Hopefully you can see that the process isn't any different for this problem than the previous couple that we've looked at. The only change is that in the beginning when we started with 3x squared, we're going to divide everything by 3 to get that to be just 1x squared. And if that were a 7 or a 12 or any other number, you'd simply divide everything by that number to get 1x squared and the rest is the same story. At this point we've used this story to solve a simple geometric problem, to solve a basic quadratic equation, to solve a quadratic equation which has no direct geometric interpretation since the area is negative, and even a quadratic equation with a non-one leading coefficient. We can take this all the way to its logical conclusion though and solve every quadratic all at once. A, B, and C here are just three real numbers. They could be anything. Well, believe it or not, we can even solve this using the same story. So let's begin by dividing everything by A because we need this to be just one X squared. And then I will bring the constant over to the other side so that we have a square plus a rectangle equal to a constant. At this point, we can go to our picture and draw the square plus the rectangle with this area. Even though this looks really strange because we have lots of variables, we're just going to go ahead and follow exactly the same story that we did before. B over A, if I were to cut that in half, each one of these pieces would be B over 2A. And then I'm going to break this piece off and bring it around to the bottom. Now that we've gotten our rectangle to be as close to a square as possible, we're simply going to fill in the missing piece and complete the square. If we multiply b over 2a times b over 2a, we get b squared over 4a squared. So let's go ahead and get a common denominator and simplify this quote unquote area a little bit. So if I want to have a 4a squared in the denominator here, I would need to multiply by 4a, which means I need to multiply by 4a in the numerator as well. So getting a common denominator there, we get negative 4ac over 4a squared. Now we can add these two fractions and we get a total quote unquote area of b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. Now that we have a square, we can rewrite the left hand side of the equation as the square whose sides are x plus b over 2a and the area of the new square b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. Now we'll take the square root of both sides. Notice this entire fraction is inside of this radical. Also notice that the denominator is a perfect square. The square root of 4a squared is just 2a. So on the next line, I'll simplify the denominator and just put the radical in the numerator. Last but not least, and you probably see where this is going by now, these fractions both have a 2a in the denominator, which means we can in fact combine them into one fraction, giving us x equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This is a really powerful result because this is something we can give to a computer and the computer can simply extract a, b, and c, plug them into this formula, and work out the solution to any quadratic equation at all. But the way we got there was by following this very human geometric story about getting a rectangle to turn into a square. If you remember this story, you can easily solve any quadratic you come across without having to even memorize this formula. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, feel free to leave a comment below, and as always, have a great day.